Live from Joplin, it's Teen Hop, brought to you each and every Saturday by the makers of those fresh, crisp H&W potato chips for party and snack time. Teen Hop was more than just a popular Saturday morning show for area teens. It was, it was a good time, it was. It was just something, it was good for the area. Wonderful memories of Teen Hop back in those years. It was just a lot of fun and a lot of good memories. It was a very happening event in the day because it wasn't anything like it. And we did have a really, really good time. I'm so glad I had an opportunity to do that. We just had a lot of fun, you know. I remember it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, although we were nervous and, and jittery. It was exciting because you got to represent your high school. It's still just as clear in my mind as it was then and the memories are just as positive and a wonderful, wonderful experience. And I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that it was part of it. It was quite a, it was, it was quite a treat to be on there and to watch it. You didn't miss it. We look forward to that, you know, as a group. Yeah, it was, it was a big deal to us. It yes, really was. it was a big deal. Um, everybody tuned in to Teen Hop on Saturday morning. It was just unique for local people to get come in, at, you know, and be on TV. I think it'll be one of the classic TV programs of the four state broadcasting area. Oh, it was a wonderful experience. It was just an honor to be there. It was, it was nice. It was a thing to do. So yeah, I would say to me, it was the thing to do. I never even considered going on American Bandstand. It's too bad they don't have something like that nowadays for kids. I mean, that kept us out of trouble, I think. You wanted to win. You wanted to win, yeah. It was just so much fun for a child to be doing something like that. It was new, adventurous. And, um, you know, it was just an honor to, to be there. Well, we were all pretty excited about going on live TV. I had fun. I definitely enjoyed it. It was like a, our local American bandstand. The, the excitement of it, you know, the, the fun. Yeah, I can, I can see out on that floor and I can see some of the people around. If you were from Joplin, you just couldn't wait to see that show. And if you were any school, any high school student, you wanted to be on the show because you thought you were big time when you hit a teen up. It was just a lot of fun and a lot of good memories. Good memories and good people. It was just a great program and a great idea. It was real exciting for the whole town. It was quite popular and uh, it, was just, it was just a good memory, probably one of my best memories of my childhood. A long-running and beloved local television show that aired from 1958 to 1975 here, KODE Channel 12. Teen Hop featured area high school students showcasing their dance moves in a competition for prizes and recognition from their peers. And they showed off their dance skills here in the main studio. It looks a lot different now. The new location, of course, is just west of Jung and Adele. But back then, winning couples would later return to compete against other local winners in the final round. And how about this? Based on our research, we believe there were more than 500 episodes of the show featuring some 15,000 teenagers representing more than 60 high schools across Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Dr. Chad Stebbins, director of the Institute of International Studies at Missouri Southern State University, sat down with some previous contestants to talk about some of their most memorable experiences. Well, I think we had four, four dance-offs to get to the finals, and, and uh, I don't know, we were just, you know, you sit there and just hope you're winning, you know, or I hope you did well, or you didn't fall down, you know, out there on the court, <laughs> or out on the floor, and, and uh, uh, but our names were called, you know, we got just to the finals, just two couples left, and, and I thought we did really well. Oh, I did we, too. <laughs> uh, we had a lot of people saying, hey, you guys were just great, you're going to win, you know. But uh, we were runner-ups, and uh, it was to a song that we had never danced to before uh -huh. called 19th Nervous Breakdown. As my sophomore year, I danced with a partner, and uh, we fortunately or unfortunately didn't win. <laughs> a couple seniors won, so, and I don't, I don't think we went our junior year. But my senior year, I went back uh, with my partner I had my sophomore year with her little sister, and um, we were fortunate to win the Jasper local and uh, we came back and and um, I think it, we were told 
the first time I danced in sophomore year, we kind of did a little bit of that shag stuff like Bobby was mentioning, but we kind of went away from that and just kind of went out and just danced our own way. And, uh, you know, I remember we uh, danced against a, a school from Pittsburgh, a couple, and um, uh, we were for fortunate to win. My mother worked for H&W Potato Chips, and that was a sponsor of a, a teen hop. And so Jim Lobby let me do a few commercials, and uh, it was quite fun. And we just kind of ad-libbed them as we went. And growing up, I had an older sister who was on Teen Hop three times as well. And um, so that was something that as a like, younger sister, I always wanted to do. And on Saturday morning, we'd watch American Bandstand, and then we'd watch Teen Hop. And, it was just so cool because it was all the area schools and we would watch the dances that they do and we would compare those dances with what we do and then I'd watch American Bandstand and try to learn to do the dances that they did and uh, it was just something to look forward to. It was a huge thing for me. I would think at every school that we that around the area it was a huge deal. You know, we would all practice and try out for the teachers and they would pick who went on and it was it was maybe just to me but to me it was it was the biggest deal uh, our group was uh, represented macaulay high school in those days and i remember that it was uh, important for us to do well as a group i don't know how you could not do well because all you had to do was show up and sort of dance yeah, and yeah. and have a good time as i recall there was two Two dance contests. There, there was four couples that were chosen, and I think we just volunteered for it, as I recall. I think they just done, and you didn't know you were going to do it when you got there. You just volunteered, and and uh, there'd be a dance contest, and then the winner, the two two contests, the winners of that thing would dance off. And I won uh, won my first contest, and then uh, and then the second one. Uh, I remember I danced against a fellow named Jim Barkley. Mm -hmm. who was the best dancer at Joplin High School and everybody knew it. <laughs> he, uh, he danced the, the James Brown version. I feel good. And, oh my goodness, he could <laughs> dance. And, and I, I mostly watched him while I was dancing. And of course, everybody was giving me a hard time. Sure. You know, I was saying, what are you doing up there dancing against him? You know, <laughs> But it was a good time. We had a lot of fun. And everybody watched, like you said. Every, everybody watched. All the high school kids would watch, hoping that somebody would say hi to him, you know, <laughs> because when he was the interviews uh -huh. and we'd say hi to folks. And of course, all the parents watched. And, and uh, Kind of funny, my mother was, was about half mad at me that I didn't try any harder in the dance contest. I was so enamored with watching Jim dance that she said, you didn't even try. I said, well, you know. <laughs> I remember that I made a wonderful impression the first year I was on. He asked my name and everyone, of course, called me Vicki. My name's Victoria and I liked my big name. So he asked my name and I said, it's Vicki Toria. Like it, and he was just <laughs> wonderful because I am just humiliated at that point. You know, I'm like Victoria, what kind of a name? And he made some really light, humorous comment about it that just took all the embarrassment away. You know, but they they were really good, treated us good, and tried to make us as comfortable as possible. Some of us got to go. Like I went all four years, and you weren't supposed to do that. And several of us went all four years, but. But that's because we just didn't have that many kids, you know. So I don't remember there being an actual much of a selection process. Like I said, I don't think we had like dance contests we could have, but I, I don't remember that. I just couldn't wait. I was, you know, really couldn't wait to become a senior so I could go to uh, Teen Hop, you know. I was just scared. I hate, hated the interview. Now, you might know it. <laughs> but, you know, because they go from table to table and they interview you, and I was just scared to death. I do great when I'm up, you know, dancing, and I can forget all that, but that, that really terrified me. I remember um, that we were all excited. We had practiced. I never was much of a dancer. I was strictly just winging it. Um, Pam was a real hero here. Oh, she, no. <laughs> she was always, like she said, a, a good dancer. And uh, not only was I shocked to win, I was shocked that she would pick me, she being a senior and I was a junior. Um, that was an honor in itself. The whole thing about going on TV was just amazing. 
you remember when we went down for the the big what they call it the final the dance off for just dance you and off. I went I went down and my mother took us and I was so nervous I got sick on the way down an essential figure of teen hop the host the original one was Jerry Henson another memorable host was a man by the name of Jim Lobby now their presence on the show had a huge impact on the program as well as the contestants contestants fondly remember Mr. Lobby. In fact, they said he was Joplin's answer to American Bandstand's Dick Clark. Jim was so personable and um, he, he had a smile that wouldn't quit. And uh, he, we just got to be friends, and I guess because of the potato chip thing. And you know, he would—they would come around to the tables, and they would interview each person. And you wanted to give all the, your school activities and what programs you belong to. Every time I encountered him, he was so incredibly nice. And I'd say he was—he was—he was a great guy. Jim Lobby was a master at, yeah. at putting you at ease and, and uh, uh, making you feel at home and you, you know you're a little nervous going on TV mm -hmm. but uh, Jim was a master at that and we'd sit around the tables and Jim would come to each table and he just kneeled by the table Ooh. and held the microphone up and he asked you of course uh, what your activities were what you you know what you were involved in your extracurricular activities those types of things and uh, most of us made something up if we didn't <laughs> <laughs> if we weren't really in anything. Jim probably could have gone on a, a yeah. bigger station if he'd have wanted to. He was really, I thought, yes, was I very agree. good, very yeah. professional, had a yeah. good voice, uh, and was a really good interviewer. Nice and sweet and, and humorous. He was well known in the area, very nice man. We saw people that you only see them on TV, yet there they were live and in person. Uh, they were celebrities to us. And um, Jim Lobby, for instance, um, I'd never seen him in person, and, uh, and there he was. So that was interesting. He made us all feel more comfortable, I remember. I remember him, you know, that, that when he was, he was a nice guy. Well, it was one of those funny situations. It was kind of off camera. When we were sitting at the tables like this, they had asked us to write out our activities. And so I had a spiral notebook um, about like this in front of me. Well, when I was out dancing, or anybody was out dancing, they would go to the tables and they'd kind of look through uh, the activities. Well, I was in home ec. I was making clothing. You know, we all made our own clothes back in, the, in those days. And they came across an item, and I was sitting back at the table but he was out on camera and he said, uh, I was looking through somebody's notes over there and they, they made a maternity top. And I, off camera I went, that was for my sister. <laughs> I thought, oh no, my principal's gonna, gonna see this. But uh, yeah, I thought, oh. So that's my funny story about Jim Lobby. He was, he was a lot of fun. He made it fun. Jim was smooth and uh, he had a lot of fun with the kids. I, I, I used to think he was trying to emulate Dick Clark. Jim Lobby was a great guy to go around and interview all of us and uh, you know it made you feel like a celebrity. Jim was always, uh, he was Mr. Personality uh, and, and, and he just kind of led you in what to, to say and what to do. And participants and viewers alike have fond memories of all the food and prizes that were given to contestants and winners from area sponsors. And we got watches for runner-up, and as I told you before, we got I got a, a tie from Vince Coupe's menswear from downtown. Uh, potato chips, uh, party steaks, uh, Pop. green stamps. I think we got some SNH yeah, green stamps so. <laughs> at the time. We got a lot of gifts, and it was it was very exciting for us. And uh, we, we won TVs and uh, party steaks and kitty clover chips and, and we went home with a carload of stuff, you know, and coolers and, and uh, had a good time and we had that TV, I mean, for years. Mm -hmm. uh, remember the, the, the uh, packages that they gave us, the kitty clover potato chips and the party steaks and I remembered Coke. We got TVs and coolers. I was never an athlete, <clears throat> I never did that. but. By golly, this is my trophy, you know, so. <laughs> also some party steaks. <laughs> Remember party steaks? A gift certificate to, was it Bob Miller on 
that used to be the Bob Miller Men's Store, mm -hmm. and uh, several other things. We got all kinds of different prizes, but uh, the TV was the thing. Wow, you know. This was, I, I, uh, this was in sixty. This one I got was in '68, and it is a Coca-Cola cooler, and uh, I've saved it all the time. Now, Teen Hop aired live, and as we mentioned, inside this very building more than 40 years ago. And even though the station has moved, contestants interviewed all remembered time inside KODE's previous home. We were shocked to go in the TV studio and look around and, and all the people in the background. Um, I was surprised. I think I, I remember getting there and thinking, gee, this studio is not very big. You know, it looked so big on, when I watched it on TV, it looked like a really big place and you got there and it really wasn't that no. big of a place. No. We were, I was surprised about that. Uh, it wasn't as big as it looked on TV. It was smaller. It was very small. It was much smaller than I thought it might be. It was smaller than I expected, yeah. It always looks bigger, you know, on camera. For a little studio, they crammed a lot of kids in there. It was not a large studio. You came in and they had some tables set up and I think they had water and, or pop, something for us. And then of course the cameras and lights, lots of lights. It was kind of crowded and hot in there it seems like, but we didn't care. It was fun and there was a nice sized dance floor to be out on. I remember little round tables. Yes. Small little round tables that set like four mm -hmm. at each table that were in the studio I think. But it was set so perfectly. They had round tables with uh, plastic tablecloths and they had Coca-Cola everywhere. You got free Cokes and free potato chips at TNOP. It was uh, lots of cameras and tape machines and other sets. Um, it was all just brand new to us. Just all brand new. It was just like a little diner is what it looked like. Just a little diner. And then in the fort wasn't even bigger than this to dance and there might have been oh maybe 30 people maybe 15 couples but it was cute it was really cute of course it was the curtains you know behind so there were no walls but then they'd roll that stuff out and they'd roll the news stuff back in and then it'd be the, it'd be the newsroom but it was it was kind of cool um, I could see where the news set was and where uh places where you'd see on TV, um, now we're there and looking at it in person. That was interesting. Um, I think my head was probably on a swivel. I was probably looking all over the place, just seeing what I could see. All right, time to talk about the music. You know, it wasn't only a vital part of Teen Hop, it also played a crucial role in many of the contestants' lives. The sounds of the 1960s in particular was the soundtrack of a generation that came of age during the Vietnam War. I think music uh, is so important to everybody, and uh, for me, it's I, it's been my salvation. I remember but, Gloria, yeah, very well. Good, uh, good song. Uh, Day Tripper by the Beatles mm -hmm. was, uh, was a good song. To probably Satisfaction. That was right in the period we were going through that incredible surge of music. Like you know, the Beatles were coming out, the Rolling Stones, um, and then of course Motown was going to town, which I was just crazy about. So, to me, it was everything. When I hear those at home, it takes me back. It just takes me back to that time, you know. Yeah. And I guess I have an old soul because I love the memories. The memories are great. If it wasn't for uh, uh, Motown and Diana Ross, I would not have made it through high school. There was um, the one, one dance contest was a uh, question Mark and the Mysterians, and it's called 96 Tears, and that was one of them that I had uh, a contest to. And um, then the Four Tops, I'll Be There, that was a good one. And um, anything of Bobby V, it was fun to dance to. You hear the, those songs, and it just takes you back to those days. And it's, you know, and that's, that's precious to everybody. You know, I always kind of felt a little left out and a little... Uh uh, like I didn't fit in lots of times, but put on that 45 and <laughs> get that beat going and, and I was fine. I remember about one of our favorite dances was the Watusi, which I 
tried to reconstruct in my living room the other day and that <laughs> didn't work too good. No, we were pretty good dancers together, you know. Uh, I was kind of a John Travolta, you know, Danny Zuko <laughs> type dancer. And, no, not really, but uh, uh, we did a lot of uh, swing dancing, uh, uh, rock and roll combination, shag dancing, and, and uh, we're, like I said, pretty good together and people suggested that we dance together. Of course, everybody could twist. You had nice little waists when the twist was popular. Dr. Stebbins also spoke with several individuals who weren't contestants on the show, but helped produce it. Station employees who gave us a behind the scenes look at the work involved with this classic local program. Even though I never saw the figures directly, I was told that it was by far the top rated program in the four state during, during that time period. Jerry made it a point to let all the participants know that our viewing area encompassed a quarter of a million people, 250,000. And this was one of the top rated shows in Joplin. Well, you had either two or three camera people, I think two. You had a whole control room of people, um, probably five. Uh, you had the MC. You had somebody else running sound. There was probably 10 people, eight to 10, just, just to put the program on. And for some reason it was so popular, it seems if other employees would just kind of show up just to watch. <laughs> there, there were other people around all the time that weren't working, but, but and, uh, and of course those advertisers that came in and the folks that set, set up the studio. So yeah, it, it probably took a minimum of 10 people. The job of the off-camera announcer was to sit in the soundproof booth and uh, be armed with a microphone and a turntable, neither of which you controlled. It was controlled from the TV uh, booth, but, uh, and a telephone. The job was to collect the radio, uh, the records from the radio. I ran the uh, evening rock and roll show uh, during the week and so I had control of the records and Jerry Henson who ran Teen Hop during 1968 would tell me what records that uh, he wanted that uh, had been requested for dancing and I would prepare those and come into the sound booth and then when the program started Jerry had this 45 RPM record which was a, a slow jazzy sort of thing which began with this dude saying, one, two, one, two, three, four, and then the, the jazz would start. Well, the script called for, <clears throat> I had this script in front of me that started off with, live from Joplin, and then the one, two, three, four, and then once that started up and got uh, potted down a bit, start in with the script. It's Teen Hop, brought to you each and every Saturday morning by the makers of those fresh, crisp H&W potato chips for party and snack time. Coca-Cola, the great taste treat anytime. And then on down through the script for all the advertisers that have bought spots on the program. And after that, no more mic, because it wasn't needed. I would start the records for the dance and then toward the end of the dance, it was my job to call the judge on the telephone. Jerry always told the, the dancers, the, uh, everybody on the set, that the dance judge would be watching and judging from home. And it was my job to call that individual, usually always a high school girl from some town other than the one that was being promoted on the, that week's Teen Hop. And uh, find out who she thought was the best answer, then I'd write it down on a piece of paper and, and uh, the next commercial break, take it out and give it to Jerry. And uh, that was the extent of my duties. The dance judge, this is where we get into an interesting story with Linda, because she was my girlfriend at the time. And uh, then later that summer, she was my fiance. Now she's been my wife for about 50 years next January. And uh, she would sometimes come in and sit with me in, in the booth, just uh, kind of a cheap Saturday morning date. A lot of the dancers apparently thought that Jerry was fibbing to them about the dance 
contest being judged at home, they thought that maybe she was the judge. And so I'm going to ask her to continue on with that. Well, I did judge a few times. I was a fill-in. You know, if he couldn't reach the party he was supposed to, he would call me at home and say, you need to be the judge today. I was there a few times with him inside, and one particular fun day, though, was when my junior high uh, tormentor was actually one of the dancers and saw me in the booth, and I thought, oh, this is so much fun. I hope she thinks that I'm the judge and she knows she doesn't have a chance. <laughs> but she did have a chance. Um, and then I believe another time when I, we needed a judge, I actually was in the studio and uh, Bill says, can we call your sister? We're on to be home. And I'm like, well, she's 15. She doesn't drive, so she'll probably be home. So just on the spot, we called her and she was the judge that day. So it was a lot of fun. I was actually a DJ on KODE radio. Uh, they uh, were a rock station at that time. And um, I went by a stage name of Rip Hollis. So that was my stage name. So Hollis hustles more music more often than anyone else in Joplin. Well, I got to go around to the tables and ask all, all the contestants, well, what were their activities in school? What grade were they in? And who were they here with? And, uh, you know, they would always have their card written up. And, hey, I want to say hi to mom at home and my sister and brother. And uh, then uh, after we did that, uh, we'd have a couple of dances. One of the perks to being on Teen Hop, fame even all these years later. Afterward, you got a lot of people saying, I saw you on Teen Hop, you know, and that was kind of cool for a little Spring City girl. It, it, was, it was a big deal. Everybody knew you if you were on Teen Hop. Yeah. They knew you were on there. Yeah. Well, and we're still recognized for being on yeah. Teen Hop. Really? Still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How so? Well, I was in Walmart just a couple of months ago and a Jasper guy said, hey, Sharon, how are you doing? And I said, fine. And he introduced me to his wife. And he said, yeah, her and her brother were on Teen Hop and won, you know, and from Jasper. And it's just, you know, unbelievable that they still connect us to that. Teen Hop, you know, it wasn't just an average show. It brought joy to the community. And that joy has had a lasting impact. Nearly everyone involved in the show has held on to the cherished memories in which it produced. And all these years later, it continues to hold a well-deserving place in Joplin's media history and the hearts of its viewers. We are honored to recognize KODE and Teen Hop by inducting the show into this year's Regional Media Hall of Fame. So it was our version of the of American Bandstand. Yeah. That was another thing, reason it was so popular, you know. Obviously none of us were going to go on American Bandstand. <laughs> you were on American Bandstand? Yeah.